A local man is facing charges after the Secret Service says he threatened to kill President Joe Biden. The details still developing tonight. According to court documents, David Reeves from Gastonia made several threatening phone calls to the White House. When Secret Service agents contacted him, they say the threats continued. If convicted, Reeves could face up to five years in prison and a $250,000 fine. In their second and final day of arguments in the Senate impeachment trial, House Democrats wrapped up their case against former President Donald Trump. In their final arguments, House managers accused the former president of a pattern of condoning violence among his supporters. Again today, images of the chaos and violence of the Capitol siege gripping the Senate chamber with a focus on the rioters' own words. House managers arguing the violent mob was acting as the former president's direction. They truly believed that the whole intrusion was at the president's orders. And we know that because they said so. I thought I was following my president. I thought I was following what we were called to do. The president told them to be there. And so they actually believed they would face no punishment. The Trump legal team begins its defense tomorrow with the core argument that the former president was exercising free speech and never explicitly called for violence. Coming up, we're tracking more rain moving into the Carolinas, but the bigger story could be the fall in temperatures. I'll tell you just how chilly it could be as this front sags to the south coming up in that Friday forecast. I'm Lexi Wilson in Gastonia, where the East Ridge Mall has been hit really hard by the pandemic, but they are adapting and repurposing spaces to gaming facilities, even a church. I'll have the details coming up next. Plus, a monument at the center of controversy for months targeted by a vandal. We'll show you the damage next. All this month, WCNC Charlotte is celebrating Black History Month by highlighting historical people and places in Charlotte and the Carolinas. Good Samaritan Hospital was the first private hospital in the state built exclusively for the treatment of blacks. Good Sam was built in 1891. It stood between Mint and Graham in Third Ward. It was torn down in 1996 to make way for Bank of America Stadium. To learn more, go to our Black History Month page at WCNC.com or the WCNC News app.
Welcome back. Police are looking for the person who vandalized a Confederate monument at the Gaston County Courthouse. You can see someone used red paint on the base of the monument. It's since been cleaned up. This monument has been at the center of controversy. Over the summer, protesters called for it to be taken down because of its roots in racism. There was a chain link fence around it that was just recently removed. New at six, an uncertain future for shopping malls. Brick and mortar stores have already been losing the battle against online shopping. The pandemic making it worse. And listen to this. 25% of America's roughly 1,000 malls will close over the next three to five years. That's according to a report by CoreSight Research. But at Eastridge Mall in Gastonia, they're trying to reverse that trend and adapt in new ways. WCNC Charlotte is confirming the mall is currently in negotiations with Gaston County public health to open a drive through vaccination site and WCNC Charlotte's Lexi Wilson reports that's not the only way they're reinventing the mall. Since the pandemic began, the East Ridge Mall has lost some big retailers, but they've also gained about nine local stores. But with COVID-19 and online shopping, they're making new changes to bring customers back. It was a golden age, a love affair with shopping malls. Until the internet came along, the pandemic accelerating the demise. Traditional retail is just under a lot of stress. Steve Stout is the general manager at the East Ridge Mall in Gastonia. He says in a time when malls are dying, it's time to rethink and repurpose spaces to meet a different type of demand. We're trying to diversify our tenant base. Visitors will now find a lot more than just stores here. There are gaming facilities, office space, even plans of a small church. Even though they don't occupy the space all the time, after they dismiss their uh, service, our food court tenants and our other people, uh, they're going to love it because they're going to have a, you know, a dedicated amount of people coming through the mall. Worshipping in a mall might sound strange, but it's a reality some people are already living. In Lakeland, Florida, and in Granville, Michigan, deserted malls are now congregations. But as malls across the U.S. continue to struggle, some may see financial ruin, but Stout sees opportunity. If you cannot adapt and adjust, <laughs> it's, you will be repurposed whether you like it or not. And another way the mall is adapting is by becoming a drive through vaccination site. Today we did confirm that the mall as well as the health department will work together to turn the parking lot into a vaccination clinic. We'll have more details on that as they are still unfolding. Reporting in Gastonia for WCNC Charlotte, I'm Lexi Wilson.